So good evening to all of you. I'm Dr. Pradeep Pawar, Professor of Anatomy, and I've got a vast experience of teaching anatomy to the undergrads and the postgraduate entrance examinations, India and abroad. So let us discuss some tips, students, how to go about anatomy because it's a very vast subject. A subject which was covered in one and a half years is now covered hardly in nine, eight to nine months. So, you know, most of the things we are exam oriented during this time. And this is a continuous learning process. Like it's not that anatomy is limited only to first year. Second year when you go to surgical uh, OTs and see the patients, again you'll be referring to the books. Your surgery books will always begin with surgical anatomy of an organ, right? So anatomy is a, you know, you have to keep on reading it. Even during your post-graduation, uh, you have to go back to your uh, the books which you have read in first year. So time is very short and you have to be very focused. And like a single subject of anatomy is itself broken down into various parts. Like now, you must have been starting with general anatomy topics. General anatomy must have been done by now. So in that general anatomy, the bones are very important. Bones, joints, like joints, classification of joints, uh, the various types of joints with examples, right? Uh, and a typical synovial joint, a typical synovial joint. That's a very important MCQ in which you have to draw a diagram and then you have to explain about the capsule and all hmm, the synovial membrane, the ligaments, like that. So that joint, the classification of bones, muscles, these are very important topics as far as general anatomy is concerned. Then we go to systemic anatomy in which the upper limb must have been started now. And upper limb, you have to, the gross anatomy, you have to be very thorough about, gross anatomy. Because the examiners would be asking you mainly the gross anatomy during dissections, during the practical vivas, practicals also. Uh, when an examiner is going to ask you something to identify, the moment you identify that structure, rest everything is theory. Rest everything is theory. So for that, your concept has to be very clear. Focus on concept building. Okay, rather than just marking up things. I've seen students marking up things, marking up pages. And if I ask a question in between, then they're not able to answer. But yes, they can recollect right from the top to the bottom. Understand things first. Understand your concept. Make your concept strong. You'll never forget anatomy. And the more you understand, the more you enjoy studying. And then the more perfect it becomes. And this is a continuous learning process. You have to keep on repeating, repeating from small groups and talk to your friends, discuss with your friends. The more you discuss, the more problems will occur and then you clear those problems by again reading those topics like that. So we've got this gross anatomy and then we've got embryology. So by now general embryology has, uh, must have been started. General embryology is a very important basic uh, concept topic. If the general embryology is clear, the entire systemic embryo is going to be clear to all of you. Hmm? The folding of embryo and all. That's a very important thing to understand. How the three germ layers are formed. Right. And then embryology in the questions, question paper for the final exams and all. You get only short notes. There's no LAQ as such. So you get a short note on embryology or you have a gross anatomy questions in which they'll be uh, write the embryological basis of development of this structure like that. So it's only a short note, embryology, fine. The other part is histology. Histology is again a full book that you have to understand. But students, believe me, if your histo is good, if your histo is, um, you know, perfect, your second year patho becomes very easy because histology is on concepts, uh, normal things that we study in the first year. And second year, the same thing will be pathological. So unless you know what is normal, you would not be able to understand what is abnormal. So the various types of epithelium, the nuclei, you know, the cartilages. So now we start with all basic tissues like muscle, cartilage, bones. Huh? And then we go to the systemic. So then you will be able to identify an organ, seeing that this is the cartilage, this is the gland, this is the epithelium. So that's how you identify an organ at the 
later stages. Fine. And then genetics, finally, you have a small part of genetics. Right? So that's how you um, plan about the first year MBBS. Be more oriented towards concept building. Okay, so some more tips at the end of the lecture. We start with this topic of ours for today. That's an axilla. I'm starting with axilla students. Understand this axilla. Understand the boundaries of the axilla, the contents of the axilla. Okay, here we start. So look at this slide. Now students, what is this area? One moment, I'll make a full screen for you. Have a look at this now. What is this area that we're looking at? This area is the axilla. Yeah, axilla. That means this is the axilla. And what are the boundaries of this axilla? The muscles which are beginning from the sternum and the ribs going towards the humerus. The muscles which are beginning from the sternum and the ribs going towards the humerus. They are going to form what? The anterior boundary of axilla. Anterior boundary. Okay, the muscles which begin from here towards the humerus, they will form the anterior boundary. The muscles which are beginning from the scapula are going towards the humerus, they are going to form what? The posterior boundary of the axilla. Posterior. We'll be seeing these muscles. So what is this boundary? That's the medial boundary. And the medial boundary would be formed by what? The ribs. And you know students, there's a muscle which begins from the ribs as digitations. Can anyone tell me what is the name of this muscle? A muscle which begins from the ribs as digitations. Yes, be interactive. So answer, it will be easy to understand. The uh, ribs are going to form the medial boundary for the axilla and the muscle which begins from the ribs as digitations, that's the serratus anterior. Serratus anterior. And the lateral border of the axilla, the lateral wall of axilla will be formed by what? The humerus and a muscle which is known as the coracobrachialis. Coracobrachialis. Okay. So with this uh, gross, uh, a brief idea, let us start with the boundaries of the axilla, boundaries. So have a look students, what is this muscle here? That's a pectoralis major and now you know the origin of pectoralis major. It begins from the medial two-thirds of the clavicle, the manubrium sterni, the body of the sternum, the second to sixth costal cartilages and the external oblique aponeurosis, correct? The medial two-thirds of the clavicle, the manubrium and the body of the sternum, the second to sixth costal cartilages and the external oblique aponeurosis. Now this big muscle gets inserted into, what is this now? The bicipital groove. What is this lip? The lateral lip of the bicipital groove and that's the medial lip. So where is the insertion of pectoralis major? On the lateral lip lateral lip of the bicipital group and this is what we feel here the pectoralis major and this is the anterior axillary fold or the anterior wall of axilla one of the muscle which contributes to the formation of anterior wall of axilla would be the pectoralis major correct pectoralis major now we remove this pectoralis major students abhi se nikal dete look what is this muscle students students a muscle which begins from the third fourth and fifth ribs. What is this? This is the costal cartilage. Yeah, costal cartilage is there. These are the ribs. What do you call this junction as between the costal cartilages and the ribs? Yes, that is what we call as the costochondral junction. Costochondral junction. Fine. So, a muscle begins from the third, fourth and fifth ribs and the muscle gets inserted into this process of the scapula. What's that? the coracoid process of scapula. What is this muscle? That's the pectoralis minor. That's the pectoralis minor. And now you tell me, you can see a small muscle here. A muscle which begins from the first costochondral junction. A muscle which begins from the first costochondral junction and a muscle which goes and gets inserted on the inferior surface of the clavicle. A muscle which goes and gets inserted on the inferior surface of the clavicle, it is therefore known as what? The subclavius. Subclavius. So this is the subclavius. What is the origin of subclavius? It begins from the first costochondral junction. It is inserted on the inferior surface of the clavicle. You have a groove there. What's that? The subclavian groove. Subclavian. So now these three muscle students, the pectoralis major, the pectoralis minor, and the third is the subclavius. These three muscles are going to form what for the axilla? 
the anterior wall of axilla. Anterior wall. So let us begin with the axilla here. Starting with the axilla. I'm so sorry, just one moment. Yeah, starting with the pen. Starting with the axilla, topic is axilla, we are starting with anterior wall. Anterior wall. So you can start with me. Anterior wall is formed by which muscles? Anterior wall is formed by pectoralis major, pectoralis minor. Subclavius. So anterior wall of axilla is formed by three muscles. The pectoralis major, behind it is the pectoralis minor, and the muscle, a small muscle that's a subclavius. Subclavius. Is clear, students? Is this clear to all of you? The anterior axillary fold or the anterior wall of axilla. Perfect. Now understand this. Answer this. Answer, but you answer for me. Now you tell me, what is this aspect of the scapula, students? If you can quickly answer this. What is this surface of the scapula? Yes, come on. What is this surface? Answer, answer, what do you know? You answer, be interactive students, be interactive so it becomes easy to understand. So, ye kya surface hoga scapula ka? That's the costal surface. Costal surface or this is what we call as the anterior surface of scapula or the costal surface of scapula. What is this process that you're looking at? Coracoid process. And what's this? That's the acromion process, acromion. Can anyone tell me what is the muscle which begins from here like this? What's this muscle? Subscapularis. That's a subscapularis. What is this muscle which begins from which which is attached to this medial border of the scapula on the costal aspect? Medial border, costal aspect. What is this muscle? Serratus anterior. Costal aspect, medial border, that's a serratus anterior. Okay. Ye coracoid process, aapko pata hai. what is attached to the coracoid process? The coracobrachialis, the short head of the biceps brachii, and the pectoralis major. This you know. The coracobrachialis, the short head of biceps brachii, and the pectoralis major. What is this? The glenoid cavity. Below the glenoid cavity, there's a tubercle. Above the glenoid cavity, there's a tubercle. What do you call this, students? What do you call this tubercle as the supraglenoid tubercle? And this is the infraglenoid tubercle. Can anyone tell me this supraglenoid tubercle gives origin to which muscle? Anyone? The supraglenoid tubercle gives origin to the long head of biceps brachii. The long head of biceps brachii. And the infraglenoid tubercle gives origin to the long head of triceps. The long head of triceps. Okay. So that's the long head of biceps and that's the long head of triceps. Okay. Now understand this aspect of the scapula. What is this aspect? Yeah, I'm just telling you this so that the posterior wall would be easy for you to identify. What's this? That's the spine. That's the acromion process of scapula. That's a supraglenoid tubercle. That's the infraglenoid tubercle. Now, students, tell me, what is this muscle which arises from the scapula below the spine? What is that? Infraspinatus. Infraspinatus. What is this which arises above the spine? Supraspinatus. Supraspinatus. Infraspinatus. Can anyone tell me what is this muscle which is inserted into the scapula? From the superior angle to the spine. Superior angle to the spine. Ye kya hoga? What is this muscle? We call this as the levator scapulae. Levator scapulae. Opposite to the spine, that's the rhomboidus minor. And below the spine, what is this? This is the rhomboidus major. Rhomboidus major. What is this muscle here, students? This muscle. Teres minor. And what is this muscle here? Teres major. Okay. So dorsal aspect, lateral border. Dorsal aspect, lateral border. The muscle here is teres minor. 
and the muscle below is teres major. So this is the scapula. I just told you the scapula in brief. So yes, supraspinatus, yes, infraspinatus, yes. clear to all of you. Hmm. That's the levator scapulae on the dorsal aspect medial border. Students, extremely important. Dorsal aspect medial border from the superior angle to the spine. That's the levator scapulae. Opposite to the spine, rhomboidus minor. Below the spine is the rhomboidus major. On the lateral border, that's the teres minor. That's the teres major. And what is a small muscle here? That's the latissimus dorsi. Latissimus dorsi. Clear again. That's the supraclinoid tubercle, infraclinoid tubercle. The supraclinoid tubercle gives origin to the long head of biceps. Infraclinoid tubercle gives origin to the long head of triceps. Perfect. Now, if you can tell me what is this? Ye kone, a muscle which arises from the inferior border of the spine and the lateral border of acromion. Students, any guesses? Inferior border of the spine and the lateral border of the acromion. If if I place the clavicle here for you, they could, they could, they could. If I make the clavicle like this for you, so the clavicle articulates with the scapula, right? the lateral one thirds, the lateral aspect, the lateral end of the clavicle articulates with the acromion process. That's the acromioclavicular joint. So students, if you can quickly tell me what is this muscle which begins from the inferior border of the spine, the lateral border of the acromion, and if we go in front, as we jate, what will that be? We go front like this, so that will be the lateral one thirds of the clavicle. What is this muscle? Any guesses, students? Any guesses? Yes, that's the deltoid. That's the deltoid muscle. And this deltoid muscle will go like this. It will go that, like this. This would be the anterior fibers from the acromion are the acromial fibers and behind are the posterior fibers. And all these fibers will get inserted on the, on the deltoid tuberosity of the hubris. Deltoid tuberosity. Yes. So that's a deltoid. Similarly, students, there's a muscle which is inserted on your, your, your. What's this you tell me? A muscle which is inserted here on the superior border of the spine, superior border of the spine, the medial border of the acromion and the posterior border of the clavicle. What is this muscle? This is the trapezius. trapezius. Okay, so that's the trapezius and that's the deltoid. So in brief, I've just told you all these things. Students, can you quickly tell me if I draw the humerus here for you? Because you will get an overall orientation. Hmm? Now, if I draw the humerus here, what is this tuberosity of the humerus? That's a greater tubercle of the humerus. Greater tubercle of the humerus. Can you tell me, students, what is this muscle? What is this muscle which is going and getting inserted on the greater tubercle? What is this muscle? Infra. Uh, infraspinatus and what is this muscle which is going and getting inserted on the greater tubercle the third impression what is that it is minor and what is this muscle which goes and gets inserted on the first impression here what's that supraspinatus supraspinatus right so that's the supraspinatus which goes from about the shoulder joint the infraspinatus and teres minor goes from behind and which is the muscle in front which crosses the shoulder joint? The muscle which was present on the costal surface of scapula. Students, the muscle which was present on the costal surface of scapula and the muscle goes right in front of the shoulder joint. That's the subscapularis. But look, the first muscle here, when you're looking from front, the first muscle here is what? Subscapularis. The second muscle which is at right angles to the shoulder joint. What's that? Supraspinatus. And two muscles on the posterior aspect. What is that? Infraspinatus and teres minor. This four muscles together forms what? The rotator cuff. This, this four muscles forms the rotator cuff. Out of this, this muscle in front, the subscapularis, turns the humerus inwards. Inwards. So what does it do? Medial rotation. Medial rotation. The infraspinatus and teres minor, they are on the posterior aspect. They turn the humerus outwards outwards what do they do lateral rotation lateral rotation and this the supraspinatus it's at right angle so when this contracts it does abduction abduction from 0 to 15 degrees this is what we call as initiation of abduction initiation of abduction so this is done by whom supraspinatus so these four muscles together are known as the rotator cuff rotator cuff with this concept students let us come to the posterior wall of axilla okay now this is what i have told you as a conceptual understanding 
Now coming to the posterior wall. Anterior wall clear then, but your anterior wall is formed by what? Pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, and the subclavius. Pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, and the subclavius. Okay. Now, tell me, students, what is this surface of the scapula? What is this surface? The costal surface. Costal surface. What is this border here? Medial border. Costal surface come medial border. The muscle here is, the muscle attached here is serratus anterior. Serratus anterior. What is this muscle? Subscapularis. And where is the insertion of subscapularis? On the lesser tubercle. Subscapularis inserted on the lesser tubercle. Okay, now look at this slide and tell me, what is this aspect of the scapula? That's the dorsal aspect. And what is this big muscle, students? A big muscle. It begins from the spines of the thoracic, lumbar and sacral vertebrae. The spines of thoracic, lumbar and sacral vertebrae arises from the iliac crest, the sacrum and the coccyx. The spines of thoracic, lumbar and sacral vertebrae, the sacrum and the coccyx and the iliac crest. And this muscle goes up, goes up and gets inserted into the floor of the bicipital groove. The muscle gets inserted into the floor of the bicipital groove. Any guesses what is this muscle? Any guesses what is this big muscle here? That's the latissimus dorsi. Latissimus dorsi. Okay, this is the latissimus dorsi. A very important muscle. Dekho, latissimus dorsi is a muscle of the back. It's a muscle of the back. What is it? Where is it arising from? It arises from the spines of the thoracic, lumbar and sacral vertebrae. From the sacrum and the coccyx, the iliac crest and this big muscle goes in front and gets inserted into the floor of the bicipital groove. What is this muscle? That's a teres major. Can anyone tell me where is the insertion of teres major? Insertion of teres major. Teres major aage jayega. It goes in front and it gets inserted into the medial lip of the bicipital group. The medial lip of the bicipital group. And what is this muscle which will begin from here? Yaha se kya arise hoga? Which will be going here? Can anyone tell me what would this muscle be? which one moment i'll just make that which will begin from here and will go like this ye kya hoga teres minor that's teres minor matlab when you're looking from back side huh, students when you're looking from back side what is this muscle teres minor what is this muscle teres major and what is this muscle latissimus dorsi from back side ye peeche se dekh rahe now look from front aage se dekhte hain we're looking from front now hmm thoda sa difficult hai ye just understand now tell me, what is this? Yes, I'm looking from front. So what is this muscle here? The subscapularis. At the lower border of the subscapularis, students, 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 at the lower border of the subscapularis, a muscle is coming from backside. Now, this is coming from At the lower border of subscapularis, a muscle is coming from backside. Eight minute. A muscle is coming from backside and this muscle gets inserted on the medial lip of the bicipital groove. Look, what's this muscle? Teres major. Now you are looking from front. So that's the subscapularis. At the lower border of subscapularis, there's a muscle which comes from the dorsal aspect of scapula. What's that? Teres major. At the lower border of teres major is another muscle which comes from the dorsal aspect of the scapula and gets inserted into the floor of the bicipital groove. It goes in the floor. That's the latissimus dorsi. Latissimus dorsi. So now we've got three muscles. One is the subscapularis. The second one is teres major and that's the latissimus dorsi and these three muscles are going to form what for the axilla? Posterior wall of axilla. This is going to form the posterior wall of axilla. Just understand the students. How does it difficult? Hai. Look, see, how do we look at the posterior wall? This yeah, anterior wall. Hai. You open the anterior wall. You remove the anterior wall. Ab jo ga, now that you are going to see is going to be the posterior wall. But if you are looking at the posterior wall from front, so it will look like this. Yes, I will show So the posterior wall would be formed by the subscapularis, the teres major and the latissimus dorsi. Students, students, where is the infraspinatus in this? Infraspinatus kidar is me? It's behind the subscapularis. It's behind the Behind the subscapularis is infraspinatus. I hope I am clear. 
So what is the posterior wall of axilla formed by? This is extremely important. Yes, come on, starting with the posterior wall. So anterior wall we have written. Now we write the posterior wall. You are looking from front. It is formed by some scapularis. To this major latissimus dorsi. The subscapularis teres major and latissimus dorsi. Can you see this? I'll write you. Posterior wall is formed by subscapularis teres major latissimus dorsi. Okay, this is it. So anterior wall is clear to all of you. The posterior wall is clear to all of you. Now, what is the medial wall formed by? Medial wall is formed by the ribs, upper eight ribs. Huh? To be specific, upper eight ribs, and a muscle which begins from the ribs. What's that? Serratus anterior. Serratus anterior. And the lateral wall is formed by. Humerus and coracobrachialis. The lateral wall of the axilla will be formed by the humerus and the coracobrachialis. Humerus and the coracobrachialis. I hope this is clear to all of you. Humerus and coracobrachialis. Let me show you. I'll show you this. So now, look at this slide, students. So, here they come. So, um, this I'll tell you later. Look at this. What is this muscle? This muscle which begins from the ribs. Look at this. A muscle which begins from the lateral aspect of the upper eight ribs. It begins as digitation, students. It begins as digitations, as serrations. You, you see this? This looks like the teeth of a saw, saw. This is therefore known as the serrations, and this muscle is known as what? The serratus anterior. This is what we call as serratus anterior, and the serratus anterior goes back, and there is an insertion. Now, here no upper side, dekhiyo. We've taken a section. So this is the rib, the muscle which begins from the lateral aspect of the rib. That's the serratus anterior, and this serratus anterior goes and gets inserted on. What is this? Scapula. What is this surface of the scapula? Costal surface. What is this border? The medial border. That's the medial border. So serratus anterior begins from the lateral aspect of the ribs, goes and gets inserted on the costal surface medial border. Costal surface medial border. Now when this muscle is going to contract, just tell me what will happen when this muscle will contract, contract. Contract it will pull the scapula outwards, outwards. Like for example, if you are lifting something like this, if you are lifting something from a distance, or if you are pushing, pushing someone, the scapula goes outwards, outwards, and this is what we call as protraction of scapula, protraction of scapula. Take care. And when this serratus anterior is paralyzed. Now, when we attempt a movement, when we begin a movement, now the medial border of scapula becomes prominent. Now, this medial border is prominent, hoga, and this is what we call as students winging of scapula. This is what we call as winging of scapula. So, winging of scapula is a defect, defect caused due to paralysis of serratus anterior. It's not the action of serratus anterior; it's a defect. So, what is the action of serratus anterior? When the serratus anterior contracts, it pulls the scapula around the chest wall. This is known as protraction. Fine. This is what we call as protraction of scapula. So, the medial wall of axilla is formed by what? The ribs and the muscle which begins from the ribs as digitations. That's serratus anterior. Serratus anterior. I hope this is clear to all of you. Now, going to one last boundary is left for me. One last boundary is left. So we are discussing the boundaries of axilla. I've told you the anterior wall. I've told you the posterior wall. I've told you the medial wall and the lateral wall. But a last boundary baki hai. Ab, what is the boundary left? Have a look at this. Here. I'll start. That's the manubrium sternum. That's the body of the sternum. This is the clavicle. 
That's the scapula. That's the humerus. This is the first rib. First rib. This is the this are the vertebrae. Vertebrae. Yeah. So now students, I'll start. What is this area? This area is the axilla. This area is the axilla. The muscles which are beginning from here and going towards the humerus, beginning from here and going towards the humerus, what are they going to form? Anterior wall of axilla. The muscle, yeah, pectoralis major, minor and subclavius. You know this. The posterior wall will be coming from the scapula towards the humerus. And what are those muscles? The subscapular is the pectoralis major and the latissimus dorsi. So that forms the posterior wall. The medial wall would be formed at the ribs. Yo, yo, your ribs, on your ribs. And the muscle which begins from the ribs has digitations. What's that? Serratus anterior. And the lateral wall would be formed at the humerus and a muscle coracobrachialis. Coracobrachialis. Now, what is that? I'll tell you later. Students, what is this now? What is this for the axilla? This is what we call as the apex of the axilla. Apex. What is apex? Any structure which has to come into the axilla. Yeah, axilla. If any, any, any structure has to come into the axilla from the thorax, from the thorax or from the neck. Ye kya hai upar? Neck. From the neck or from the thorax. If any structure has to come into the axilla, it has to come through this space. And this space is what we call as the apex of the axilla. Apex. Or this is also known as neck. Yeah, neck and neck. Neck is known as what? Cervix. Cervix. From the neck to the axilla. This is what we call as the cervical axillary canal. Cervical axillary canal. I hope this is clear to all of you. So let, let me just tell you this. Cervical axillary canal. Cervical axillary canal, also known as apex of axilla. Cervical axillary canal, also known as the apex of the axilla. What are the boundaries of this? Boundaries anteriorly clavicle, posteriorly. That's a superior order of scapula, medial is the outer border of first rib, first rib. See, anteriorly ye kone clavicle. Posteriorly, what is this going to be? The scapula. But to be very specific, what is this border of the scapula? The superior border of scapula. Huh? Yes, superior border of scapula. And whose medial? Medial is the first rib. But the first rib has got two borders, an inner border and an outer border. So which border of the first rib? The outer border of the first rib. Outer border of the first rib. Okay? So this becomes the apex of the axilla. Or this is what we call as the cervical axillary canal. Just write this down. A very important MCQ. Apex. Or the cervical axillary canal. Just write this down fast. So cervical axillary canal or the apex of the axilla. I'll have to clear this. Huh? Boundaries. Anteriorly clavicle. Anteriorly clavicle. Posteriorly is the superior border of scapula. Posteriorly is the superior border of scapula. Medially is the outer border of the first rib. Medially is the outer border of the first rib. Outer border of the first rib. Now who enters the axilla through the apex? Who enters the axilla through the apex? What is this you tell me? Students, what is this? Chalupoli. Behind the manubrium sternum. Behind the manubrium sternum, what is that? Arch of aorta. That's the arch of aorta. And tell me now, what is this structure? What is this structure which is, which is, you know, crossing the first rib? 
what is this artery which crosses the first rib? This is the subclavian artery. The subclavian artery, the moment it crosses the first rib, up jaise ye first rib ko cross kiya, it is now known as what? Axillary artery. Axillary artery, this axillary artery enters the apex. Okay, now this axillary artery enters the apex and now comes into the axilla. It now enters the axilla. So who enters the axilla through the apex? axillary artery axillary artery are you clear so this is the subclavian artery it crosses the first rib now it is known as what axillary artery the axillary artery enters the apex and now comes into the axilla perfect the someone else someone else here this is c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 and what's that students what's that the brachial plexus that's the brachial plexus and that's how the brachial plexus enters the axilla through the apex so what are the structures which enters the axilla through the apex one is the axillary artery and the second one is the brachial plexus i hope this is clear to all of you yes draw the slide and finish this first this and finish this you're getting you're getting oriented now i'll show you the slide then later huh? it will be still clearer the belly concepts clear color so that's how the axillary artery and the brachial plexus enters the axilla through the apex okay and now students tell me what is this bone here below the lateral one thirds of the clavicle Below the lateral one thirds of the clavicle, what is the bone that we have? That's the coracoid process. Okay. Below the lateral one thirds of the clavicle, that's the coracoid process. And what is this muscle which begins from the ribs and is inserted into the coracoid process? That's the coracobrachialis. Coracobrachialis. And this is the medial and the lateral lip of the bicipital group. What is the muscle which is inserted on the medial lip of the bicipital groove? The medial lip. This is the teres major. Teres major. What is this? This is the pectoralis minor. Pectoralis minor. Okay, just have a look. One moment, students. One moment, just have a look. So, what is this artery? From here to here. From here to here. That's the axillary artery. Just have a look. What is this artery? That's the axillary artery. So now you tell me students, the axillary artery is a continuation of what? It's a continuation of the subclavian artery at the outer border of the first rib. It's a continuation of subclavian artery at the outer border of the first rib. The axillary artery enters the apex. It goes into the apex. It enters the axilla. Now it comes into the axilla. At the lower border of this muscle, what is this lower border of teres major? It now becomes what? Abhi ye kaun hai? The brachial artery. This is now the brachial artery. Tell me students, what is the relation of this pectoralis minor with the axillary artery? Where is the pectoralis minor with respect to the artery? It's in front. Wo aage hai. The artery is behind the pectoralis minor. In other words, this pectoralis minor is going to divide the axillary artery into three parts. From its beginning to the muscle. What is this part? From its beginning to the muscle, that's the first part. Behind the muscle, that's the second part. And after the muscle, that's the third part of axillary artery. Okay, first part, second part and third part. That means, that means... The axillary artery is divided into three parts by whom? By the pectoralis minor muscle. Okay, so the axillary artery is divided into three parts by the pectoralis minor. I hope this is clear to all of you students. Just write this, draw this, fast, finish this. So that's about the axillary artery. And then you have the brachial plexus. Clear? So what are the contents of the axilla? The contents of the axilla would be one, the axillary artery. The second is the brachial plexus. Now, which part of the brachial plexus lies in the axilla? Which is that part of the brachial plexus? See, brachial plexus ke parts can roots, trunks, 
division cords and nerves roots trunks division cords and nerves out of this half of the brachial plexus lies above the clavicle half of it is above the clavicle and half of it is below the clavicle you understand half of the brachial plexus lies above the clavicle and half of the brachial plexus lies below the clavicle what do we call this part as above the clavicle this is what we call as the supraclavicular part above the clavicle this part of the brachial plexus is known as the supraclavicular part of the brachial plexus and this part below the break below the clavicle is known as the infraclavicular part infraclavicular and what is the infraclavicular part made up of the cords and the nerves cords and the nerves so which part of the brachial plexus are we going to get in the axilla the cords and the nerves cords and nerves okay and where do they lie they lie around the axillary artery okay i'll just mention this for you ek minute we we'll just write this down uh chalo bachcho we'll just write this down contents of the axilla contents of the axilla one axillary artery and this axillary artery is divided into three parts by whom the pectoralis minor what are the branches of axillary artery huh? first part second part third part clear and it is divided by pectoralis minor so what are the branches of the first part first part superior thoracic axillary artery and its branches so what are the branches from the first part superior thoracic artery from the second part lateral thoracic and thoraco acromial artery and what are the branches from the third part two branches winds around the humerus one from front one from back what is that anterior circumflex humeral the posterior circumflex humeral and the subscapular subscapular so first part superior thoracic second part the lateral thoracic and the thoraco acromial the third part anterior and posterior circumflex humeral and the subscapular subscapular axillary artery and its branches axillary vein and tributaries infraclavicular part infra clavicular part of brachial plexus the infraclavicular part of the brachial plexus and what is this made up of cords and the nerves infraclavicular part of the brachial plexus and this is made up of the cords and the nerves so cords are present in cords are present in first and second part cords are present in first and second part of the axillary artery and nerves are present in third part okay so cords are present in the first and the second part of axillary artery and the nerves are present in which part third part fine and fourth is axillary lymph nodes axillary lymph nodes i hope this is clear to all of you so that's about the topic the axilla anyone has any doubts you ask me and then i'll show you the slides kuch doubts hai to bolo bachcho any doubts anyone has so clear so today's topic was axilla we have discussed the boundaries and the contents of the axilla boundaries mein one is anterior wall one is posterior wall one is medial one is lateral and one is the apex of the axilla just to revise it first the anterior wall of the axilla is formed by the pectoralis major the pectoralis minor and the subclavius the posterior wall of axilla is formed from above downwards by the subscapularis the teres major and the latissimus dorsi the medial wall is formed by the ribs and the muscle which begins from the ribs acts digitations serratus anterior and the lateral wall is formed by the humerus and the coraco brachialis humerus and the coraco brachialis stick okay? then what is the apex of the axilla what are the boundaries of the apex anteriorly is the clavicle posteriorly is the scapula medially is the first rib 
तो ये बन गया एपेक्स एंड नाउ व्हाट इज द कंटेंट्स ऑफ द एक्सिला हु एंटर्स द एक्सिला थ्रू द एपेक्स वन इज द एक्सिलरी आर्टरी एंड दिस एक्सिलरी आर्टरी इज अ कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ व्हिच आर्टरी सबक्लेवियन आर्टरी एट outer border of the first rib outer border of the first rib the axillary artery enters the apex comes into the axilla at the lower border of teres major it is now known as the brachial artery brachial artery this axillary artery is divided into three parts by pectoralis minor pectoralis minor okay and then you have got the branches of axillary artery branches so let us go and then you have got the brachial plexus now which part of the brachial plexus lies in the axilla infraclavicular part infraclavicular part lies in the axilla and this infraclavicular part is made up of what the cords and the nerves cords and the nerves are infraclavicular so where are the cords present in the first and the second part and where are the nerves present in the third part in the third part ओके आई होप एवरीथिंग इज क्लियर स्टूडेंट्स कुछ डाउट्स है तो बोलो एनी डाउट्स इफ एनीथिंग इज लेफ्ट टू बी ड्रॉन विच एल मी सो आई जस्ट शो यू द स्लाइड्स बिफोर वी लुक एट दिस लुक एट दिस दिस इज अ ब्यूटिफुल स्लाइड ब्यूटिफुल स्लाइड स्टूडेंट्स सी इफ यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दिस चलो विल स्टार्ट यू कैन आंसर दिस स्टूडेंट्स यू कैन आंसर वॉट इज दिस मसल आंसर दिस What is this muscle? Hmm. Answer anyone? Can you see this pointer now? What is this muscle? A big muscle. That's a pectoralis major. ये बड़ा सा muscle है. That's a pectoralis major. What is this muscle which begins from the ribs? देखो, it is beginning from the ribs. It is inserted into the coracoid process. What is that muscle? Pectoralis minor. That's a pectoralis minor. And what is this muscle, which is beginning from the first costochondral junction and going to the clavicle here? That's the subclavius. Subclavius. So pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, and the subclavius. These three muscles are going to form what? Anterior wall of axilla. That's the anterior wall of axilla. Now we have cut the anterior wall. Pectoralis major ko cut kia. Pectoralis minor we've cut. Subclavius we've cut. That means what have we cut? anterior wall of axilla that means what is this that you are looking at ye kya dekh rahe ho what is this that we are looking at the posterior wall of axilla and the posterior wall would be formed by one what is this muscle subscapular is second this is major and this shining tendon this is the tendon of latissimus dorsi latissimus dorsi so the posterior wall would be formed by the subscapularis the teres major and the latissimus dorsi clear now what is this artery here that's the axillary artery and what is this here that's the brachial plexus that is what comes into the axilla so what are the contents of axilla the axillary artery and the brachial plexus and the brachial plexus okay what is this muscle now that's the pectoralis minor that's the pectoralis minor and this pectoralis minor is going to divide the axillary artery into three parts from its beginning to the muscle what is this part first part behind the muscle that's the second part and what would this be third part of the axillary artery so what is present in the first and the second part they go first and second part may call it cords cords and what is present in the third part the nerves cords are present in the first and the second part and the nerves in the third part and the cords are placed according to the names in which part second part but of second part may the cord which is lateral that's the lateral cord the cord which is medial that's the medial cord and the cord behind is known as the posterior cord the cord behind is known as the posterior cord okay In the first part, also we have the cords. First part may be cords over there, but the cords are not placed according to the names. They are not placed according to the names. They are just randomly placed. They are just randomly placed. So first and second part may cords over there. In the second part, the cords are placed according to the names, and in the third part we get the nerves. I hope this is clear to all of you, students. I'll just write the axillary artery for you. Axillary artery. I'll just write this down for you. Okay. Now, 
axillary artery. It's a continuation of continuation of subclavian artery at outer border of the first rib. It's a continuation of subclavian artery at the outer border of the first rib. Continues as brachial artery at lower border of continuous is brachial artery at the lower border of teres major divided into three parts by pectoralis minor first part what are the branches Superior thoracic, second part, lateral thoracic, and thoraco acromial. Third part, anterior circumflex umbral. Posterior circumflex umbral, subscapula. Okay, that's it. So anterior circumflex umbral, posterior circumflex umbral, and subscapular artery. I hope this is clear to all of you students. Some brief about our platform. There are many new things which we are starting on our uh, an academy platform. Just have a look at this. Any doubts you have in this axilla, you tell me. If you have any doubts, students, you tell me. Okay, I'll just start with this. So, uh, the NEET PG calendar here, for the NEET PG students here. So, April 19th, we've got biochemistry, subject wise test series. April 20, we've got anesthesia. 21, it's a PYQ mixed back. 22nd, it's anesthesia again. And 23 is an image based mixed back 7. So, plus subscription students, in which we have got daily live classes, live quizzes, learn from the top educators, study from the device of your choice. And now you can also access our course in bank. An iconic subscription where you get the best of an academy and pre platter So we've started with an academy live students. This is a special uh, test series, test series curated specially for you students. We're starting with MBBS first prof from 20th of April. We've launched the daily practice test papers. That's after the plus classes we have this. So doubt clarification, we've started this batch. And these are our FMG toppers who've got very good ranks in the FMG exams. Some special class features in which there are daily life classes, live quizzes, learn from the top educators, study from the device of your choice, never miss a class. And if you miss it, you get the lecture notes in the form of PDF. So anywhere, anytime you can attend the class and get your doubts solved. Fine. So we're starting with new batch FMG 2022 high yield revision and MCQ batch from April 20 for one month. And download the Academy app and subscribe to it. Have a look at the various subscriptions available, the plus, the iconic and the light subscription. Okay. Any doubts students you have, you can ask. Any doubts at the board in this topic, the axilla. A very important topic. Okay. And see students, make emphasis on the concept clearing. If your concepts are clear, like serratus anterior, huh? in the practical, the examiner will ask you, identify this muscle. Then you identify the serratus anterior. The next question is all going to be theory. What is the nerve supply? What is the action? What is winging of scapula? So everything is theory. Make your theory proper. Make it perfect. And then practicals will always be easy. Okay, and have the practice of writing. Okay, write your own answers. Once you read things, make your own answers because by now you have lost the habit of writing answers, solving all, you know, 
MCQ oriented questions. So writing practice you have to have. Fine students. So make your own answers and make a fine folder. And you know we've got three marks questions, five marks questions and one LAQ. A clinical oriented. So now uh, you've got this clinical oriented questions. Like for example, a person comes with paresthesia on the lateral aspect of the forearm. The nerve affected is a branch of what? So this is musculocutaneous nerve. So then you have to know musculocutaneous nerve is a branch of which cord? And what muscles it supplies? And what is the cutaneous branch? What skin does it supply? The musculocutaneous nerve. Clear? So that's how you are supposed to know things. Anything, any doubts, anything which is not clear, you can tell me students. Which doubts are the board though? So we'll come with a similar lecture. Any queries? If anyone has about the course, about studying for first year. Fine. Answer this MCQ. This was my MCQ left. So what are the functions of latissimus dorsi? Now students, if you understand, this latissimus dorsi is a muscle of the back. This was one MCQ left. So this latissimus dorsi is a muscle of back and it is going in front. It is going into the humerus, into the bicipital groove. It's a muscle of back but it's going in front in the floor of the bicipital groove. So when this muscle contracts, it will take the arm backwards, backwards. As a piche piche, what is this action? Extension, extension. When it contracts, it will take the arm towards the body, towards the body. What is that going to be? Adduction, adduction. And when it contracts, it will also turn the humerus inwards, inwards, like this, like this, like this. What is that? Medial rotation, medial rotation. Okay. Once again, this latissimus dorsi is very important. What is the origin of this latissimus dorsi? Begins from the spines of the thoracic vertebrae, the lumbar, the sacral vertebrae. Thoracic, lumbar, sacral vertebrae begins from the sacrum, begins from the iliac crest and begins from the inferior angle of the scapula that's the inferior angle and this entire big muscle this entire big muscle goes and gets inserted into the this entire big muscle goes and gets inserted into the floor of the bicipital groove floor of the bicipital groove when this muscle contracts it takes the arm towards the body that's adduction it takes the arm backwards that's extension and it turns the arm inwards, that's medial rotation, okay? And this latissimus dorsi, you, you see now a um, person um, doing push-ups, push-ups. Push-ups is the one, there's a bar and the person holds the bar and he pushes his body upwards like this, upwards. Or you've seen a person climbing a tree, a person climbing a tree. This is a muscle which helps a person to climb a tree. And this latissimus dorsi is therefore known as a climber's muscle. Climber's muscle. So climber's muscle is latissimus dorsi. You know who's a boxer's muscle? Boxer. When a person gives a punch, the scapula goes outwards. The scapula keeps on going outwards. So boxer's muscle is, your answer, serratus anterior. Yes, boxer's muscle is serratus anterior. And when this serratus anterior is paralyzed, the medial border of scapula becomes prominent. This is what we call as winking of scapula. Winking of scapula. Okay, that's it for today's students. Any doubts? The session is open for doubts. Any doubts anyone has, you can please ask. Yes. Any doubts anyone has? I'm waiting. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. But Chow, come on. Any specific topic, if you want that also, you tell me. Huh? I got a good specific topic.
something which you have not understood anything like that that's also fine that's also you can tell me come on students talk talk something talk something any specific topic so you know i have taken youtube lectures i have taken special classes for the first prof have a look at them i have taken the retail nerve i have taken the retail nerve as a special class for the first year i have um, taken lectures on the axilla for the first prof i have taken uh, lectures on the hand the hand part 1 and the hand part 2 as a two lectures liye have a look at that okay so thank you thank you to all of you thank you Thank you.